Greetings, everyone. I'm going to go through a solution to uh, some of our problems at five, problem number 10. Uh, sorry for the bad audio quality. I am in northern Idaho and don't have my nice microphone with me. Um, but that said, let's get into it. So here's the so here's the problem. Uh, the first part says create a new class called interval that represents uh, a numerical interval. So for example, if you give it the inputs 3 and 5.5, .5, it represents an interval that contains all the numbers, all the real numbers, all the decimal numbers between 3 and 5.5. .5. So let's do that. Here I've got a class called interval, private, double, low, high. So it's got two fields, the low point and the high point of the interval. Very important. You should mark all of your fields private unless you have a really compelling reason not to do so. Um, this is a big thing on the AP test. Uh, usually they take off points if you forget to mark them private. Uh, I'll tell you more about why that's a prudent thing to do once we, the class begins, but for the moment, just make that your ordinary practice. Just mark your fields private. Okay, they should also be doubles because of course your endpoints can contain decimal numbers. All right, so uh, I'm going to make a constructor and a bunch of getters and setters. I'm going to use the auto code generating tools inside Eclipse to do this. So I'll say generate constructor using fields. There we go. I will also say generate getters and setters. And I want getters and setters for both low and high. All right, so now I've got this nice interval class. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to make this client class, uh, otherwise known as a tester class. And let's see, it says, Create an array list of interval objects, and then loop 100 times and create 100 random interval objects. All right, so if I'm going to have an array list, I'll have an array list, and then whatever goes in the triangle brackets is the data type for the array list. So what kind of thing does the array list contain? So it's going to contain an interval object, because that's the class I just made. And I'm going to name my variable intervals, because it contains a whole lot of intervals. All right, new array list interval. I'll hover over ArrayList so that I can import it from java.util. All right, so I've made my ArrayList. Uh, the next thing it said, I want to create 100 random intervals and add them to the list. So I'm going to make a loop that loops 100 times. Oops. All right, so that's looping 100 times. And what I want to do in here is create random interval objects and add it to the list. All right, so I guess I'll create a variable, interval i, oh, I can't call it i, let's call it interval, equals new interval, and I need to give it two numbers here. Um, and if my intervals are supposed to be random intervals, I want the low point and the high point to be random numbers. So let's back up one step and do that. I'll say double a equals math.random times 100, double b equals math.random times 100, all right, um, but I can't just say a, b here because these are both random numbers. So for all I know, this number is uh, 87 and this number is three. And that's not the order that my interval object expects. Here in my interval object, the first parameter, uh, it's assuming is the low value and the second parameter is the high value. So if I pass those in correctly, um, my interval object won't work. So, uh, some people used if statements here. A kind of a nicer thing to do is math.min and math.max. Because that will test to see which one is actually smaller and use it as the first parameter. Test which one is larger, use it as the second parameter. All right, so now I have my random interval objects and I want to add it to the list. So this is the same no matter what kind of list you have. I have the name of my list variable, dot add. And then what do I want to add to the list? I want to add the interval object I just created. All right, so far so good. So I'm looping 100 times. I make my random endpoints. I make my interval. I add it to the list. So here I am now outside here. If I wanted to, I could drop this all inside a method called initialize list, which would be nice. I'm going to just go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm pasting all that same stuff in there. Oops, okay, uh, let's, let's pass in my array list. All right, cool. 
So that's part A. Part A is I have now taken this list and I've filled it with random intervals. Okay, part B is let's, uh, no, wait, this is part B. So this is part C is I want to query the user and ask them to pick a number. So let's, uh, I'll use a J option pane. So string response equals J option pane dot show input dialog, enter a num between zero and 100. Okay, and I'll have double dot parse double response. Okay, so num now is the variable containing the number that the user typed in. So what I want to do is I want to loop over all of the intervals in this list, and for each one of those intervals, ask, is this number inside that interval? All right, so the first step is let's loop over all the intervals. Uh, I guess you might not know about for each loops yet. There's a nicer way to do this, but I'm going to use this way for the moment. Intervals.size, I++. Notice that I did not say 100 here. Um, the reason I didn't say 100, this is called a magic number, and it's magic because if I showed this to another programmer, they have no idea why 100 is the right thing to do here. In fact, you might look and see, aha, 100 is a here, 100 is here. You might think it has something to do with this if you weren't thinking about it very carefully. So it's bad to have just numbers sitting there that people have to guess at why is that the right number. The right number here is 100 because the size of this list is 100. But if the size of this list changed, this wouldn't be correct anymore. So instead of using a bare number, let's just say intervals.size, because that's guaranteed always to loop over the full list instead of just up to 100. All right, so I'm looping over the full list. Let's get an interval out. So interval equals intervals.get i. So again, i is the index of the list, and I'm saying, I'm asking the list to give me the object that is at that index, and I'm saving it into a temporary variable called interval. So here's something that some people did that is not the best answer. They said, all right, I want to test if number is inside the interval, so I'll say if num is greater than or equal to interval.getLow, and also if num is less than or equal to interval.getHigh. So if that's true, if both those things are true at the same time, then that means number must be inside the interval and so I can print it. So the logic for this is correct. What's wrong is the organization. This question of whether or not a number is inside an interval, that's a basic fact about an interval. So all of the logic for this if statement should be contained inside the interval class. What we really, I just cut it right now. What I really want to do is something like this. I want to say if interval dot contains num. I want to be, I want to have the contains method be a basic thing I can ask intervals. I want to be able to say, do you contain a number? Right now this method doesn't exist, but let's make it. So here I am inside the interval class. Um, I've just automatically created this method stub. A method stub is a method, oh, it says right here. A method stub is a, an auto-generated method that doesn't contain a body yet. And I'm just going to paste in that same if statement that we had before. So if the number that's the input to my method is greater than the low value and less than the high value. Only now, we are the interval, so I don't need to ask an object about get low, get high. I can use my own getters. So get low is going to run my own getter method here, and get high is going to run my own getter method. Um, you could also just replace this with the variables if you wanted to. I could just say low and high, and that would also work. So return true, return false. Okay, there is a shorter way to make this method, but I don't want to dwell on that right now. So now I've got this contains method. And now this reads really cleanly. If the interval contains the number, then I want to display it. So again, we want to use, uh, we want to have all the logic uh, having to do with intervals be contained inside the interval class. So the nicest thing would be if we could just say system.out.println interval and have that display the interval nicely. So in order to do that, you remember you have to use toString. So here inside the interval class again, I'm going to make a public toString method that's going to return how I want this object to be displayed. So I want it to display kind of 
nicely with brackets. So I'll have a square bracket, and then I'll have the low value, and then I'll have a comma, and then I'll have the high value, and then I'll have another closing bracket. All right, so now I've got a nice two string. Here I am back in the tester. Uh, I think this should work now. I'm initializing all my intervals. I'm asking the user for a number. I'm looping over all of the intervals that already exist. I'm getting each one out one at a time. I'm asking the interval if it contains the number, and if it does, I'm displaying it. Cool, so let's try it. So I'm gonna enter the number 50, and here's a whole bunch of intervals. So, yep, between 16 and 90, 40 and 65. Definitely all of these intervals look like they contain the number 50. So let's go back and see if we missed anything. Um, the AP test, when you actually program on it, they'll have a whole bunch of instructions and the, the dumbest way to lose points is by not going back at the end and reading to make sure you've done everything you're supposed to do. So uh, let's see, I'm doing this one. I'm looping over the array list and displaying each one that contains the user's point. Yep, blah, 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 great. Okay, so that's the answer to that one. I hope this has helped.